There was a time when we had a very peculiar system of petrol rationing in this country. The Arabs weren't sending in the oil for some reason, and uh, at the same time nobody would admit that there was no oil or no petrol, and yet they had brought in a regulation that you could only get one pound's worth of petrol at any given petrol station at any given time. And it was all very complicated. It meant that somebody would be sort of in, say, Kinnegad and say, Kinnegad, Kinnegad, there's petrol in Kinnegad! And 7,000 <laughs> cars would line up in Kinnegad and they'd all get one gallon each, or one pound's worth each. And this pound's worth was enough to bring them on to the next place, which might be my, my Nalti, my Nalti! And everybody went to my Nalti. And by the time they got to my Nalti, they were empty again, because they'd only got a quid's worth. And, it, and the result was, anyway, to cut a long story short, that at the end of the day, they'd visited 15 different pumps, spent 15 pounds on petrol, and they still had feck all in the tank. <laughs> and this was known as fuel conservation. <laughs> but anyway, at that time, there were two men in Dublin. They decided to go down to Ballybunion for a golfing holiday, and they were going down to the Midlands, using this system of a pound's worth here and a pound's worth there. And they got down through the Midlands, and they were beginning to feel a bit chipped, you know, a bit chuffed with themselves, and maybe we're going to make it. So they got over the Limerick border into Kerry, and they were very pleased. And they came to this village, they came to a full stop in the middle of the village street, absolutely deserted, nobody around, no sign of a garage, nothing in the tank. So the driver got out and he went on a bit of a recce and he came to this, uh, finally, a pub. And outside this pub there was a dirty, dilapidated looking petrol uh, pump, rusting and so on. And uh, the pub was equally dirty and looking. But anyway, he, he went in, he peered around and in the gloom he made out the figure of a lady behind the counter knitting. Uh, an elderly lady. Well, let's face it, she was an old one. But anyway, <laughs> he said... Uh, Excuse me, he said, you have, you have a petrol pump outside? We have, God bless your eyesight, we have, yes. <laughs> well, he said, have you any petrol? We have not, we haven't a drop. But we'll have it in the morning, because they said, no, faithfully, they promised that the lorry would be out first thing in the morning. So if you're here in the morning, and of course you will be, because you know petrol to go anywhere else, <laughs> we'd be able to fix you up. And he said, that means we'd have to stay overnight. That's right, yeah. Oh, you figured that out very fast. <laughs> oh, the Dublin man for the brains, I always say. That's right, yeah. You'd have to stay overnight, yeah. But he said, is there a hotel? Oh, what hotel do you want, for God's sake? You get bed and breakfast here. We do the best bed and breakfast in Kerry. And he said, you, in the morning, you'll get your petrol. What more do you want? Uh, mm, yeah, okay, yeah. So I better ask my friend. So he uh, checked with his pal and they said, okay, they'd stay. And they stayed. And in the morning, she was as good as a word. The lorry arrived. They got their breakfast. They went on their way. They had a good holiday. They went back to Dublin. And about three months later, the man who'd been driving the car came to his friend. And he had an envelope in his hand. He was sort of tapping his fingers and looking very solemn and... Said, um, uh, do you remember, he said, when we went on to Belly Bunny, remember we had to stop overnight in that old pub? He said, oh, yeah, I seem to recall. Uh, you seem to recall, do you now? Yeah, you remember bloody well, he said. No, he said, tell me the truth. I want the truth now. Did you go to bed with that old one? <laughs> he said, well, uh, I did, yes, I, I did, I did, I did, yes. You did, you bad. And you gave her my name and address? <laughs> she said, I did, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he said, you're going to be more sorry now, because she died and left me the pub. <laughs> Sad story that, I always think. <laughs> <laughs>